What's up, YouTube trolls? What's up, YouTube hoes? Merry, merry effing Christmas. Happy holidays, you guys. What's up? So, you guys already know what time it is. It's real talk time. Yo, for real, happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Hope you guys are having, like, an amazing day whenever you're watching this, whether it be this evening, this afternoon, tomorrow, next week. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. What's up, you guys? So, Today is Real Talk Diva time, Real Talk Devo time, Real Talk mother effing time. Hope you guys are like finished with y'all Christmas shopping. It's starting to get real hectic out there. You know what I, I hate? Okay, maybe it ain't just me. But you know how you go to like a whole bunch of different Walmarts, right? And you'll be looking for just stuff. It don't even have to be anything particular. You're just doing your Christmas shopping and you'd like to do it at one particular store. You know, maybe you just don't want to go to a whole bunch of different stores on that one particular day. But you went to Walmart in, in like in a you just had this feeling that they was gonna have stuff, and they ain't have shit. Like there wasn't stock, none of the shelves were stocked. You know what I'm saying? You in a nice neighborhood, but none of the shelves are stocked. Okay, they ain't got shit. When I say none of the shelves, it ain't even got to do with toys no more. You can go to the food aisle, to the household aisle. The aisles ain't stocked properly. You see, like every there's a lot of missing shit, and you planned your day out. Okay. Girl, that's how it has been for me twice. I go to Walmart yesterday with my son at his house, which there's a Walmart right around the corner from him. And I don't go to that Walmart. It's like the, the ratchet Walmart. Like it's always over capacitated with people. There's just so many people be in there and it just be like the ratchet shit goes on in, in that neighborhood. Right. But anyway, we go in to get like a, a garbage can and some some hampers. And why, when I say why, why was that fucking store fully stocked with everything? Like when I say everything, every goddamn thing in that store was stocked. From the toys, to the socks, to the lettuce, to the goddamn paper plates. Everything in that fucking store was well overstocked. I'm like, damn, this make me want to come over to this Walmart. And I don't even like this Walmart. Is there a good time when it's not so fucking busy? Because what the hell? I, I just was like amazed. And it, it wasn't even just that Walmart. It was another Walmart that I really don't fuck with. Same situation. Mad toys. Everything. Just everything was stopped. I'm like, who would even have thunk it? Because I was only here that particular day because I was just in the neighborhood. It's not like a bad neighborhood, but like it just be so many people in that neighborhood too that... I'm not going to go to that Walmart and some of the ratchet shit be happening and popping off there. The popping off ratchet Walmarts always seem to have well-stocked the shit. When you go in a quiet neighborhood, it's like there's hardly nothing on the shelves, barely at the Walmart. You you know you ain't going to get everything that you came for. And is it because, like, is it because that it's so quiet there and nobody voices their opinion? I'm just trying to figure it out because now it's like, let me just go to the ratchet Walmarts because I'm pretty sure I'm going to find everything I need. I was just, like, overwhelmed at the store. I'm like, damn, I can go down this aisle and get something. I can go down this aisle and get something. I was like, oh, look at this. I ain't even never seen this at the Walmart in my neighborhood. Like, they had some, like... Really nice stuff. They had like this nice marble, faux marble plastic tray it was ten dollars. And I was I had it in my hand and I'm like, what can I do with this? Like you ever get stuff you want you want it so bad you gotta stand in and think about what you can do with it. 
Because you know you, you don't need it, but you like, I really want this. What can I do with this? Where can this go? And that was me. And my son finally was like, Ma, you don't need to put it back. I was like, you're so right. That's all I needed was somebody to say I didn't need it. And that's how it goes for me. But that was my experience yesterday. Today is a whole another day. You know, um, I ain't going to no Walmart. I'm going to go to the post office. I'm going to mail off some packages. Um, I'm going to definitely edit this video for today when you're watching it because it's Tuesday. Um, nothing major. I got a package coming from Amazon. You know, Amazon Prime. Get your shit on time. Girl, y'all know how much I love Amazon. Got me a new ponytail coming in the mail. Yes, girl. Ponytail coming in the mail. Okay. Being delivered today. Got me a little bit of ombre, kinky, straight ponytail action coming in the mail. You know, I, I'm trying to stay away from the wigs. Not because it, I don't like them because I love the wigs, y'all. I love the wigs. But you know how sometimes when you want to put on a wig, you got to put a little bit extra work into it. And I go to the gym Monday through friday okay so i go to the gym monday through friday so in reality where am i going to wear a wig to i i have seen women okay there's this one particular woman who goes to the gym and i just be wanting to tell her girl just stop it's got bangs and it's just long and fluffy and it looks so hot and i'm thinking maybe she's wearing this to make sure that she can sweat a little bit more because you know how some people are at the gym they wear jackets and things like that just to keep it on so they can sweat a little bit more. This is what I'm starting to think about with this lady when she's wearing this synthetic wig. Like, I don't care if it was human hair or synthetic. It's so hot when you're working out. And for you to be wearing something with a big shaggy bang, oh my God, it's like, girl. So maybe she's using that as just like a sweating tool. I don't know. Not my problem, not my business. But I just feel like if I'm going to the gym Monday through Friday, there's really no time for me to wear a wig at all. I mean, I could wear a headband wig, but I'm not even going to really want to wear a headband wig to the gym. However, if I had to choose between wearing a regular wig or a headband wig, I would definitely wear a headband wig to the gym because at least my head is exposed. But anyway, I, I think I feel like I'm just going on and on and on. But so being that I go Monday through Friday, I just feel like, you know what? Ponytails are more my favor. I'm going to try and rock out some really cute ponytails. I'm going to look at some ponytails and see what I Okay, can do. so I had purchased this from Amazon a about a week ago and i really thought it was just for people that had like thinner edges on their hair or what have you something to fill in like in particular spots and a spot this company that i love which is edge booster you know they have the edge pomade the edge gels they have so many different products like girl i was amazed at how many products they have when i seen them in the beauty supply store so when i seen this which is their style factor hideout pomade stick i really did think that it was for just to make your hair a little bit thicker because when I looked on Amazon, that's what I was looking in, like edge fillers or what have you. And I've been growing my edges back, but they seem like they take forever, all right? And in the meantime, I would like to use something that will kind of like give you the illusion that, you know, whatever. So when I when this popped up on the screen, I really didn't read it. I just seen Edge Booster Pomade. And then I read the reviews, some of the reviews, and they were really great. So I think there was like four or five colors to choose from. I got a deep color called Deep Brown. When I got it, I realized it says hideout. It's supposed to cover your grays. But girl, I really do like this stuff. I use it for the thin areas. Now, mind you, I could have got a color, a shade a little bit darker, like one shade over, because I feel like I can see this depending on the lighting. When I'm in the lighting of like the light bulbs, I feel like I can see it. But when I'm outside, I don't feel like I can see it at all. And though I may not have blended it really well to, in, in one particular spot down here, it goes on so easy, and um, I've used it on my eyebrows the other day, and you really couldn't even tell. It goes on easy, and it stays on good. And I don't know if it stays on well, and, and it adheres so well. Is it because, maybe because in my hair, I also do have their pomade gel and styling gel, two of their products. So maybe in conjunction with one another, the products work well. But, girl, listen, this stuff worked really good, and I like sits, okay? But I think I need, like, a one shade over. But I thought I would share that with you guys because it came from Amazon Prime. And what did I just say? Amazon Prime, get your 
shit on time, girl. So let's just get into this real talk real quick. You know, you guys already know what to do. If you got a real talk, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com or aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. Put in the subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the name of the people that you're talking about in the real talk, go ahead and let me know you changed their names. And if you did not say that, 99.9 times percent of the time, I will change it for you. So on that note, let's get into this real talk. Huh? 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 What? Yeah. Real trap <clears throat> Life got way too real. This has already been titled for me. Hello, Miss April. I have been a subscriber for a few years now and have received help from you and fellow divas and devos in the past and hoping y'all could help me out again. The names in the story have already been changed and I thank you in advance for any help you can provide. At the beginning of the COVID, uh, excuse me, at the beginning of COVID, the company I worked for closed to three branches and told all of the workers we would, be, we would be working remotely for the foreseeable future. About a year ago, we finally returned to in-person work However, due to the vaccine mandates and us no longer offering remote work, a lot of people quit. This led to the company restructuring positions and I ended up receiving a promotion and becoming a shift supervisor. Well, after the company made the announcement that I had accepted the new position and would, and would become a shift lead, a coworker who we will, who we will call Anne asked if she could talk to me at some point about something she was upset about in the workplace. At this point, I am now a supervisor, so I felt obligated to sit down and hear what was upsetting Anne. I asked Anne multiple times over the course of the week to stop by my office and talk to me whenever she had a moment, and she kept giving me reasons as to why she couldn't and stated she would call me later this evening. I was confused and a little irritated because who wants to deal with work shit once your shift has ended? I sure as hell do not. Despite this, I told her, okay, I would be waiting to hear from her. She called me later that evening, and when I picked up the phone, Anne was crying. She told me she was very upset and angry that I had received the promotion over her. Anne is only working part-time at this point and had expressed in the past she would like to move to a full-time if one should open up. Mind you, Anne often is calling out or going home early because she is always having a life crisis which management has spoken to her in the past about. I apologized to Anne over the phone as I understood how this might have made her feel. As I thought the conversation over and I was about to hang up, Anne begins to start crying again and tells me she feels like she can't do anything right and she felt as if she should just take her life. I took this very seriously and while on the phone with her, texted my immediate supervisor about what was going on and asked what should I do. My supervisor must have reached out to her emergency contact, which was her husband, as well as local police, and that was all I knew. Weeks, spent by, weeks went by and I noticed her desk had been cleared. I asked my supervisor out of concern if she would be coming back and was told Anne resigned. She went ahead and resigned. Another week passed and Anne reached out via text to me to tell me I ruined her life. Anne was upset that I told my supervisor that she said over the phone that night and because of it she was put into a psychiatric hold. She felt too embarrassed to come back to the workplace and is now also having relationship issues with her husband because of everything that happened. I generally do not know if I did the right thing. I do not go around snitching and gossiping but I felt the need to get more help in this case rather than her truly take her life. I really did not know what to do in that moment. I do feel guilty like I made a mess of things for Anne. What should I do? Thank you. I don't recall her giving herself a name that wrote me this. So we're just going to call her call her Mary. Mary. Virgin Mary. Because she was a virgin to being a supervisor at this job. And so basically Mary came back to work after about a year or so. After being on remote home from work. Work due to the COVID, okay? A lot of people quit the job place where Mary was working at, and which means that a lot of people quit. A lot of people were promoted to different positions. You know, 
opportunities opened up for a lot of people, which is always a great thing. However, a lot of people, you know, quit because they didn't want to return due to the vaccine mandate. They didn't just want to return. You know, the COVID put a strain on the whole economy, a whole mental, the whole mentality, the whole mental of everybody. Like seriously, it has, it has, and it still is. Okay, so that's one thing. Like you, you know, a lot of people take serious. But after you know returning from working at home, um, Mary, you know, she was promoted to a shift lead, a supervisor. Good for her. Congratulations, girl. Okay. However, you know, one of her co-workers, Anne, found out the good news, the good fortune for Mary, and went to her and said there was something that she needed to talk with her about, and would it be possible? Mary agreed. She kept waiting for Anne to come by to the office, and never came by to the office. She told Mary that, Anne told Mary after several attempts, I will call you this evening. Now, mind you, Anne was the one who approached Mary in the first damn place, okay, to ask her if she could talk to her about something that's weighing heavy on her at the workplace, okay? But also, Anne is also the one who was trying to avoid Mary from having a conversation. Like, that's the part that, that, that get me. Like, bitch, you the one that stepped up to me. You approached me asking me if we could have a meet and greet about what's going on in the workplace. And here it is. You trying to avoid a motherfucker now. Okay, whatever. Anne calls Mary at home that evening. And the whole issue, getting on the phone crying, you, that's the part that, that, that behooves me. So, you called me crying. Like, bitch, you're going to wait till you finish crying to call me? I'm just saying, like, is that, I mean, that might, that might be, like, not really sensitive of me. But you, I just feel like sometimes people do shit just because they try to pull at your heartstrings. So, we got this girl, Ann, who calls up her supervisor, Mary in the evening but you want to call me up while you're in the midst of fucking crying like you had all this opportunity prior to call me but you want to wait till you fucking boohooing you avoided me at work for how long but you don't want to step to me talking about we need to have a sit down a chit chat a fucking meet and greet about something that's weighing heavy on me here at work but you tried to avoid me but now you want to call me up crying so that's where i don't really be having no sympathy or empathy because it's like Bitch, you you the one who, who who orchestrated this whole fucking setup. And now you want to call me up crying? Like, is that supposed to pull up my heartstrings and make me feel some type of way towards you or for you? I don't know. It just feel like a setup. So that's why I'm like, that bitch couldn't wait until after she stopped crying? Like, I'm just saying. Who am I to judge, right? But then, did she have the nerve to call her up crying because she wasn't made a supervisor? Okay, from what I just read, bitch, what? You can't. First of all, your hard work and skills is always recognized. You don't really have to put out too much work. Like, as in, hey, I want the job. Hey, I want the job. Hey, I'm over here. Can I get the job? You'll be recognized by your hard work, hopefully, most of the time. Okay? Depending on the environment. However, here's the thing. You gonna call somebody the fuck up crying when you orchestrated the meet and greet. And then you're gonna talk about how you mad. You big mad. Bitch, you mad what? Because I'm a supervisor and you're not who work part-time, who also got sent home plenty of times due to your midlife crisis and life crises and call in and out. Like, where do you think you wanna become supervisor with all those issues that you have? Like, I'm just saying, okay? But who am I to judge? I would think that it would probably be hard for somebody that works part-time to get promoted as a supervisor, but I don't know. There are different circumstances. But maybe they didn't see you as fit for the job, Anne. But the part that gets me is, then she gets on the phone still and then starts re-crying to Mary about how she can't do nothing right and she just feels like taking her own life. I'm not saying that that's a lot. I'm not saying that that's true. When you hear someone saying, oh, I want to take my own life. If you don't really know the person personally to take to, and know how to take it, then what would you do? Like you, Mary and Anne was just co-workers. Y'all wasn't buddy, buddy, chum, chum, chummy. There were empty positions due to people not coming back. Mary didn't know she was getting promoted. She didn't apply for the job. She just was given it because of her hard work ethics and because people didn't come back. Now, had those people came back, Mary asked probably wouldn't have got no fucking promotion. But, Anne, why is you getting big mad? And, Mary, why are you so paranoid and feeling like it was your fault that she resigned from work? So, 
where was I? <laughs> Back to Anne, the one who is the crier. She started to recry on the phone with Mary because I guess the conversation was about to be over. And this is when she decided to state that she was feeling as if she wanted to take her own life because she doesn't do anything right in the world. As Mary is on the phone with Anne hearing this, she didn't know what to do. And I think she did the right thing because if you don't know the person personally like that, then how are you to really say that she really meant it or not? What if she would have taken her own life, then what? You would have probably really felt bad because you didn't do anything about it, right or wrong. And then you probably would have felt like it was your fault that she's not here, right or wrong. So there's that, that this whole entire situation is, is like a win-win, lose-lose. Like you understand what I'm saying? Depending on how mature the other person is. And when seeing this, I feel like Anne, the one who is the crier, she definitely isn't mature at all. Because for one, you always getting sent home or you're always calling out due to life crises. That doesn't seem like you're a mature individual, which means why would you be able to hand any type of supervisor position at any type of job? Whether it be McDonald's, working at the Dollar Tree, or working at the school board, how are you able to hold that down when you can't even... Hold your own life issues down. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. I'm not judging anybody, but I'm just speaking straight facts, like on some realness. Like, let's be for real. Hello. Okay. Now, the part that gets me is I don't think I would have the audacity or the balls to fucking call anybody up and tell them that I'm mad because they got a higher position than me. Like, who does that? Like, let's be let's be mature about the shit. If you ain't happy with a person, just keep your motherfucking mouth shut. But to feel bad, Girl, listen, I think like on some real shit, Mary, you did the right thing because that could have been your your job if you would have known that she was going to do that. You As a supervisor, you did the right thing. Y'all not friends. You know what I'm saying? Y'all not friends. Y'all not buddy, buddy, chum, chum, chummy. Y'all is work associates. And you as a supervisor are supposed to report those type of things. So what? You reported it. And from what was done, what happened was Mary went to her, her higher supervisor while she's on the phone with Ann, texts them and says, listen, I got one of our employees who's telling me she wants to end her life. What should I do? She didn't know what to do. She's new to this position. And what did that that supervisor do? What I guess they're supposed to do. Call law enforcement and call the person on your contact on their contact list for an emergency. And that's what happened. She got placed into, you know, a facility where they had to monitor her. And from that, she and felt guilty of, or embarrassed rather, and decided to resign at work. And due to that, she's also having relationship issues. Listen, I don't, I'm, I'm definitely not going to say that you have anything at all, Mary, to do with her relationship issues. Because here's my thing. If they were on good terms, her and her husband, then he would have been very supportive towards her at this time of her need. Therefore, there's probably something a lot more festering than you even know. So I don't think you had anything to do with her relationship. If their relationship was really strong, mm, then I'm pretty sure he would have been very supportive towards and at her time of need, especially right now. So I doubt that you have anything to do with her relationship. I doubt that you have anything to do with her resigning at work as well. First of all, why would you be embarrassed? Let me tell you something. Everybody go through shit in life. And that's just straight up. We all need some counseling sometime or another in our lives. Now, nobody's life is perfect. I don't give a fuck if you think that the perfect person next door to you because you're seeing them driving a Bentley, they grass, they lawn, they grass, they lawn is real well trimmed and well taken care of, as well as they bushes and stuff, house looking all nice, children coming out looking real cute, spiffied up, cleaned and bossed the fuck up, wife going to work, husband going to work. They look like the nice typical family, but you don't know what really is going on on the side of their home, okay? Or their minds, understand what? I'm saying so what you see on the outside is not always what you see on the inside so that means everybody goes through some shit in life and be embarrassed to come back to work why I would never be embarrassed to come back to work because for one there's a HIPAA law and bitch if my shit and my business get floated around the office that I've been to the motherfucking loony bin there's gonna be a problem and that means that I know that one of y'all at the workplace supervisor manager team leader staff whatever was running they got their mouth and that's how my business got okay 
passed around the office. So therefore, that means that, bitch, I'm about to be rich, my bitch, because I'm going to sue you guys for passing my business around because that is what? A HIPAA law. So I wouldn't even dare be embarrassed at all to come back to work. You did your job. I did my job. The thing that I might have been embarrassed about is because I called you up and said I'm upset that you got the job as a supervisor because I would feel like April you was hating and you was real jealous you know what I'm saying but that's the only thing if that were me I would feel embarrassed about I'm just saying but we all go through some shit in life so for you to feel guilty about what you did Mary I wouldn't even feel guilty because you did what you were supposed to do as a supervisor that's someone above her and as a friend too because if that was your friend would you just want to let that shit slide under the fence and not even pay it no mind and then the next day you get a phone call talking about your friend is no longer here because they took their motherfucking life then you really feel some type of way like listen somebody can tell you that but you really don't know if they're gonna go through with it or not you don't know they can tell you that and maybe like six seven hours later something drastic might happen in their life to where they go through with it you understand what I'm saying? Or the next day they can go through with it. You don't you don't really know. So to listen to someone say that, that's hard to just like not even do anything about. You know what I'm saying? Like me personally, I would have done the same thing in your shoes. I don't know you personally. I don't really know what you're capable of doing or what you would do. So I'm just going to be safe and I'm gonna do the right thing. Now where it took off and left off from there, that's not on you. That's on Anne. Okay, she's the one that resigned from work because of her embarrassment. That's on her. Maybe she had more going on than you even knew or herself knew. So I wouldn't feel guilty about that. And as far as her relationship with her husband, sweetheart, like I said, if their relationship was really strong and was going good, honey, a boo boo child, okay? He would have been there to support her, especially at her time of need. So don't feel like you ruined her fucking life because maybe you saved her fucking life. And that's the problem with people. They always think it's, it's so sad because people will want your help. And then as soon as you help the motherfuckers, they will act like you you just did the worst fucking thing. It's like, can't I can't win for lose up in this motherfucker. You want my help or not, bitch? Like, what the fuck is it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just be trying to figure it out, y'all. I just be trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I seriously be trying to figure it out. Like, either you gonna want my help or you gonna, or not. Like, what's it gonna be? And, like, the sad thing about it is they want your help, but they don't, they don't want your help. That's when you know that they motherfuckers need help. They confuse their own motherfucking self. Yeah, you guys. So, on that note, I'm gonna go. That was a great real talk. I love you all. You know what I'm saying? I hope you guys are having like an amazing holiday. Shout out, special shout out to my bestie, Kurt. And I don't even think I'm gonna call him my bestie anymore. But anyway, he's always watching my videos and showing love and support. So, you know, special shout out. Um, and also happy holidays to all of you guys. Special shout out to all of you guys. I hope you guys are having like an amazing, blessed happy holidays. I will see y'all in the next one.